some books, you know, maybe some computer programs that focus on academics. Mm. You know, our children are already brainwashed into materialism. We don't yeah. need to keep further in that. I'd rather walk in the light, it keeps high. Look to the left and the right, it's a light. I don't waste time with the mediocre below average when I get the king in sight. I don't waste time with the mediocre below average when I get the king in sight. Well, great people, we are back with another episode of Snap Up Lytic, where you are challenged, encouraged to think for yourself, think outside of the box, make a difference wherever you are on the globe, in your community, at your job, in your household, in your family. Make a difference, great people, but think for yourself. Don't be led with the masses. All right, good people, I have been covering some things about youth here this week, and it has really got me fired up on solutions for our kids. I want to talk about this. I don't always necessarily agree with this um, professor's mindset, but he's had some very key points. We've done some couple of videos or at least a video I know for sure on Sibo and Snapper reacting to um, a video based off of one of his viewpoints that he spoke on. So who am I speaking about? I am talking about Dr. Umar Johnson, a smart man, very smart man. <clears throat> I haven't always agreed with every single point, but we got to talk about this. I, I, I clearly want to hear what he has to say. Our people are comfortable being in the bottom. And that's exactly how I feel. We got all the excuses and the reasons as to why we still hovering low, except for looking in the, at the man in the mirror. So let's get it. Let's get into this video, guys. I can't wait for y'all to get in the comment section. I know I'm catching up on my comments, so be patient. But I do know that when I hit the video the first time, I go down the, the list and I respond to everybody's comments. <clears throat> so let's talk about it. You talking about Dr. Umar? Um, you know, you know, you had this rapper. I name her name is Sexy Red. She came back and gave back to to the school. Uh, and yeah, uh, and she caught a little flack about it. What, in your opinion? Would you let her come to your school and give back to the students? How did she give back? What exactly did she do? Well, what she did was she gave uh, bundles to the girls, and I believe she bought the boys uh, shoes and outfits and things like that. So, you know, upkeep upkeep things in the schools. Um, I mean, that was upkeep. the best way, you know, that may have been the best way she felt she could give back. You know, I would have preferred more. You know, maybe she buys some books, some black books, some conscious books, get them some books, you know, maybe some computer programs that focus on academics. Mm. You know, our children are already brainwashed into materialism. We don't yeah. need to keep further in that. But I'm mm. not knocking a sister. You know, she did what she understood based on her level of consciousness. You know, that's what she felt would be best. So I'm not knocking her, you know. I, 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 I think I, she got she caught flack because of the subject matter and the content of her music. Um, well, she should have so, caught flack, you know. Mm -hmm. We got to be a little bit more responsible. Responsible, you know. I'm very disappointed in our female artists constantly projecting uh, the sexual exploitation of the black female body. You know, mm -hmm. I think black women are being sold out by our black female artists. Mm. You know, black women suffer more than any other woman from sexual objectification and abuse. Mm. So when you constantly see black artists feeling like the only way they can sell their music is through sex, mm. you are pushing a historical stereotype that has been used to justify the sexual exploitation and abuse of black women. And I, and I definitely want to say, you know, um, commend her for going and giving back that's you know outstanding hopefully she was dressed appropriately for the school environment I ain't saying she got to have on no three-piece suit and no dress to her ankles but let's let's be appropriate there I don't know I'm just saying that but that's great I mean that that that's a big thing to be able to give back to your community and go to the schools we definitely all want to do that we want to go back and give to help kids but I like the fact that she even thought enough to do that and maybe if she had a had a conversation with a couple of other educators there, or maybe she did. And maybe that's, you know, they were like, fine, give what you want. But I, I do agree with him as well in saying that, you know, giving them some things that could benefit the school from, you know, as an, uh, from an entire perspective versus just individualizing, you know, with money and shoes. And our kids are, you know, really, really caught up in that loop. But that would have been out, you know, outstanding program software, um, other character development, you know, character education, social skill, 
building, self-esteem, confidence lifting type of vibe. Now, I don't think black women do enough to hold black women accountable enough. They're artists for constantly pushing this racist, stereotypical, sexually subjective brand of music and art. There's much more to the black woman than her body. Yeah. But mm-hmm. our artists refuse to show us anything other than that. And I think it's a travesty. So, I mean, how, but, but that, that's, that's, well, that's very true. But how do we find a common ground uh, with this without having judgments? Because, you know, we need as, as much black dollars as we can as far as them giving and being charitable. How do we find Well, common first ground? of all, let us be honest. Most mm-hmm. black celebrities are not charitable to the black community in the media. Exactly. Way. So mm-hmm. let us be clear. Mm-hmm. I don't know of a single relevant institution that mm-hmm. any black celebrity or group of black celebrities have built. If you mm-hmm. know of something, please let me know. I'm not aware of them coming together to build an independent black bank completely owned by black people, not underwritten by black people. Okay, they haven't built no hospitals, no supermarkets, no schools, no jobs, no distribution. So uh, I'm going to have to disagree with Mm. the premise that black celebrities are charitable to the black community. No, they are not. And you can make an argument that they give more money to non-African sources than to African sources. So if some of that money was coming back to us, maybe we could tolerate some of that nonsense for a little while. But so (laughs) and where I am... In my thinking and mm-hmm. in my political development, I'm mm-hmm. not really interested in negotiating with degenerates. Mm-hmm. I'm not interested in negotiating with the gen- I'm not negotiating with the snow bunny crisis. I'm mm-hmm. not negotiating with childhood transgenderism. I'm not mm-hmm. negotiating with black artists who uh, push uh, racially stereotypical images of their own people for 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 for, for profit. Now, I do know that there are some artists that have, you know, that go back and give to the community. But like he said, build build up your own, you know, schools, build up your own um, markets, you know, community of stores, banks, you know, hairdressers, salons, job, place of employment, um, uh, job development, you know, centers, all of these things. Where Where is it? And I know I've spoken to this about... Um, I've spoken about this to, you know, some other colleagues as to say, you know, when is it? Because we're big on promoting liquor. We're big on promoting our brands when it comes to, you know, clothes and and shoes and and marketing products. But when it comes to our community, where is it? Where is it? We know about Black Wall Street, but but where, where is the new Black Wall Street? Where where is it that we can go? And it should be across the USA. It shouldn't just be in one state. We should have multiple successful communities where we have we have put jobs in an area. We have a store. We have several businesses in in vicinity of in a block, a couple of blocks, a um, an outlet mall, but um, not necessarily an outlet mall. But you know what I'm saying? These um, this store where uh office park where you have multiple businesses that are you know black owners because many races have them and i'm out here in california so i see it all the time let's go Mm -hmm. i'm not negotiating because Mm -hmm. we've all we've already been negotiating Mm -hmm. and we've gotten Mm -hmm. the the short end of the stick every time you understand i'm not negotiating with it They're, they're there's either right or there's wrong. It's either dark or it's light. It's either mm-hmm. wet or it's dry. There is no middle ground. That's true. What you're doing is either contributing to the advancement of African people or the destruction of African people. There's no mm-hmm. middle ground. No, no doubt. And, and I think it's all about having the best political uh, a, a footing as possible as far as for our people. Power, that's the key. Um, I know the great Marcus Garvey, man, and, and he was always a political street strategist. He met with white supremacists, man. Uh, what is your thoughts on that? And would you ever meet with white supremacists as far as with on a for political means? Now, I'm not for personal means, but would you ever uh, do that? Absolutely. The Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey met mm-hmm. with the white power structure. Mm-hmm. And that white power structure that he met with was the Ku Klux Klan. And mm-hmm. part of the basis and premise for that meeting 
was due to the fact that there was a war going on between Marcus Garvey's Universal African Legionnaires, the mm -hmm. military of the Garvey movement, and the Ku Klux Klan. They were killing each other. KKK was killing black folks, and black folks was killing KKK. So mm -hmm. what you had was the leaders of, of the two most influential race-based organizations in the country coming together for a ceasefire. It's no different than Joe Biden meeting with the prime minister of China. It's no different than him meeting with, the, with, with Putin in Russia. Do they like each other? Hell mm -hmm. no. But in order to prevent bloodshed, to slow down the bloodshed, to reduce conflict as much as possible, let's have a sit down and come to some terms so your people don't have to be worried about mine and my people don't have to be worried about yours. The reason why some black people would criticize Mr. Garvey's meeting with the Klan is they don't understand the behavior of nations. They don't understand mm -hmm. political science. They don't understand military strategy. Garvey mm -hmm. was the head of the largest black organization on the planet Earth. And at the time, the Ku Klux Klan was the most influential, well-known white organization in America and terrorist organization at that. So the meeting was necessary so that two opposing armies could come to terms before there was any further bloodshed. It's no different than when George Washington sat down with the commander of the British Army right before the American Revolution. Is there a way that we can piece this thing out before any more people die? That's all it was. Two military leaders having a conversation as to whether or not a ceasefire would be possible. Certainly. And, I, and, and, and the crazy thing is I don't think... <clears throat> Blacks to get it now as they didn't get it then as well, too, for real. They wouldn't. Yeah, they wouldn't as we, well. We don't think as a nation. We don't think as a people. If you do not think as a nation, you will never understand the behavior of the most honorable Marcus Garvey. If you do not think as a government. See, Garvey was different from every other leader. They all brought you churches and religions, all of them. And it mm -hmm. took you away from Africa. Nearly every group that came after Garvey was anti-African and it was nothing but religion. Garvey built a government for African people. The UNIA was a government in exile. He built a government. And as the leader of that government, the democratically elected provisional president of that government, he had an obligation to meet face to face with an organization that most believed at that time was the one that most threatened the livelihood of African people. Certainly, certainly. Well, I want to talk about economics now. Uh, Farrakhan, he recently said, uh, the Honorable Minister. Okay, great people. I pretty much primarily wanted to to, to talk about what um, that he was saying about uh, Sexy Red. And I, I do completely agree <clears throat> with this point when it comes to, you know, she did what, what she did was from the bottom of her heart. And she wanted to give back in the way that she felt was a great way to give back. And we're definitely not knocking that. Yet, on the flip side, I think what could have been a little bit more beneficial would have been something for them in their school. Maybe give them some shoes, okay, and cash. Maybe they need that. However, let's put something in the school so when they come every day, it's going to benefit them in some way. I don't know if the, if the school was great on technology. I'm sure it probably was. But let's add a software to it. Character, like I said, character development, things that's going to help enhance them and social skills wise and even even academics maybe they needed something else academically to support them already in their classrooms so this was good and some of the things he was talking about I, I can I can definitely agree on that I can definitely agree on that but let me know what you think about this um who do you know celebrity wise primarily african-american that has contributed to um building up um, specifically a community that promotes black businesses and it is an area for um, primarily black businesses. I know in the West End in Atlanta, there was a lot of black businesses over there in the West End area, and which is good. I haven't been home in a, in a minute and I know I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still there and there are several black businesses there, but I'm talking about like that, like a mall. And then you have several other um plaza malls where it's you know black businesses because in every community each community has their own plaza mall not just blacks it's you know um hispanic it's asian it's um they're uh dutch we have indian so I, i've seen several where it's a slew of stores owned by uh, one particular community and i don't see anything wrong with that and i think 
you know, that continues that continues to help you help your community circulate money. Even though we are from a worldview, we still have to help each other. I support great businesses with great products and great service. I don't care what your race is. That's my mindset. And I also feel that every community should have some form of representation from there. I do. I do. All right, great people. Let me know what you think about this video and, you know, what he's talking about when it comes to artists and even how we're being, um, how it's really sex sales. And that's pretty much what's going on when it comes to, I feel like many um, of the mainstream artists, because Christian rappers are, are don't project themselves outwardly that way. Yet when it comes to mainstream, that is, that's what people want. That's what these labels are pushing and the artists co-signs because they're doing it and we still have to be mindful of you know how we carry ourselves and and are we living up to the expectation that God are we living in a way that pleases God because overall at the end of the day that's what it's all about let's get into this comment section guys let me know what you think about this video and I will see you on the next one appreciate your support and if you're finding value in this content subscribe to the channel share the video and I'll see you soon